Special Speed and this is the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires Truck. And today co-hosting with me is my good friend and Daytona track announcer, Rob Bido. So welcome, Rob. Thanks, Golden Boy. It's a pleasure to be here. We're at that pivotal point in the whole series. Everyone says when you get to Daytona, that's where the championship hunt begins. Yeah, I absolutely couldn't agree more. So right here, we're standing behind the starting gate, and the riders are just walking out on their first view of the track. And start has been kind of the traditional Daytona. It's a left-hand corner, it's not a full 90 degree, and it's about 235 feet long. So uh, we're going to head out to the track now and get a look. And just want to thank everybody for viewing. Uh, it's been great. We've got loyal viewers starting to follow the track, and we're heading out, as you can see right here. Daytona, a little bit of clay, a little bit of dirt. We can see this is getting to be a trick, Rob. You got to kind of analyze the dirt, and become dirtologist. So you can see right here, this uh, this soil is the a little bit of dirt. and then uh, you know when you talk about heading out, riders are coming out here, and you've had an opportunity to walk the track. They do it in a pack, and they all start looking at it. And you know, I think a couple of them talk them into. I think I could quad that. I think I could triple through there. I think I could do that. And that's where the uh, strategy, if you, the race craft, they start to build it this early in the day. And as you walk around, you mentioned earlier, cornucopia. We got red clay. We've got white sand. We've got the dark, rich soil here. A little bit of everything for a tire company. What do you pick to battle all this? Well, that's an excellent, excellent question. Uh, I do think, in general, the two bikes for some reason do head towards the the paddle tire the 450 guys they don't seem, seem to think they need that extra drive that the paddle tire offers and so they 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 stick with the traditional knobby although last year aaron plessinger chose the paddle tire and he ran up front and had a great run and ended up on the podium which at that time wasn't his normal position on the 450 so it's tough to say uh we'll see what happens out here today and some of the guys start going towards the pedal you know what's Thing is, you mentioned uh, Aaron Plessinger having a great run here. It seems like so many of the, the riders that have that real, true outdoor capabilities, Ferrandis, and obviously Eli Tomac, who's been amazing here. But this could be a race where we see yet another new winner. Cooper Webb probably has a great opportunity here. And then when you think about what like Dylan Ferrandis here, Do we think we can yeah. just go, no, I have no mic? Yep, you're good. Difficulty never heard anybody. That. We tried to complaints. We complaints, people. The audio, it's from a phone without sort of a remote mic. So we have some remote mics trying to use them and give us a glitch in the first. Thanks for your patience. But we talked about Dylan Ferrandis. Dylan Ferrandis. Right, Daytona, and only to be broken by sixth win, and that's an question about it. It's traditionally a guy that's just fast outdoors, and he loves fast. I might just have to unplug. Let's, let's go for it. Okay, we'll just uh, just pull the doggle out. We'll see if we can go live. Do we have audio now? Heck yeah, we're just going to have to make sure you folks that are at home that aren't here, and I think a lot of the folks that are tuning in today are here. Daytona has a massive crowd of people already. The weather in the 80 degrees, today's going to be one of those tracks where they've thrown a lot of water down on it, but this thing's going to dry out and be rock hard before it's all done. Yeah, those for you, the fans that really paid attention yesterday on social media, they saw the fact that there was a press day. Some of the riders got to ride just on the basically the east end of the track, not the part we're on now, and they did allow Christian Craig to ride this part for media. Kind of threw everybody for a curve because Christian Craig is actually not entered in Daytona. He was just here for, you know, the Florida press, for the press and, and everybody to be able to see what the whole track laid out, and he's living here in Florida now, so it was an easy drive down from the Tallahassee area where all the new Yamaha compound is at the old Ricky Carmichael goat farm there. So coming into this first corner right here, Rob, behind us, 
rollers behind right back there. And then you saw a few of the riders hit right around where our gentleman in the Dunlop shirt is standing right there, pop up and clear this, is which our five footer, which was a quite a little big pop right here for Christian to do that. And he did it only in the first couple laps of practice. And then here, right behind us is the big tall jump that they were able to launch. This would be what we call a five footer. And they were launching, carrying the whole triple jump behind us. So then it leads into a table. So this is gonna be interesting to watch right off the start. One of the things I think the folks at home might find interesting, traditionally, our friend at Dirtworks are the ones that build the track. Randy Pelletier is the one that put this together. Ricky Carmichael designed it. Randy whipped it in the shape. Randy's name is familiar. Tell the people where Randy, where we know Randy's work. A lot of outdoor motocross, the folks at Redbud, uh, you know, the Richie family have utilized his talents for many, many years. And I think he's down here doing a great job. He's got the track ready for not only this, but the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Day. And it's going to be a fantastic facility. They'll do a lot of work to it. Once the track walk's done, they'll go over. I know they added an inside hit or two. We found that out this morning as well. Yeah, we walked the track this morning, and they definitely made some changes. They're, you know, that's the good thing about press day. They get to see what some of the riders are doing, and what doesn't really look right to them, they'll modify it, change it. They did, again, put a couple little hitters on the inside to get the riders have to to basically try to even out the inside and the outside lane. So excellent, uh, get, can't wait to watch. I know the track was a little dry yesterday oh, and then they awesome. added a lot of water, which is fantastic because we haven't had any rain as you can see, it's perfectly sunny today, so. Daytona's been the uh, turning point every year and uh, this particular year, what a battle they have. Anderson, Tomax in the mix, for Webb starting to assert himself. Everybody's growing into this series and this race is gonna be the great one. We're done here. Let's watch these sections. You mentioned yep. a little hit into a five-footer, into a triple, into a table bump. The rhythm sections here are absolutely amazing. And one of the things that I, I find very interesting in this year's track, we have an over and under, but it's actually kind of a figure eight configuration. It's a little bit clockwise and then a little bit counterclockwise. So the track goes in two directions. I mean, if you're a boat guy, it's kind of like a counter rotating propellers if you have a twin engine. So it's gonna be interesting for the fans to watch too. Our buddy Phil Nicoletti walking the track out here, putting his eyes on things. And uh, Phil, the 715, ready to go here in Daytona. Great to see, we've got, we got that uncomfortable man yeah. hug going right here. Get in between us, buddy. Step on over here. Step in the middle. Step in the middle. So talk about board. the season on the new muck off uh, program. Or... Yeah, it's been good. Um, I'm enjoying it. So back down to the 250 class, but uh, I love my bike, love the chassis, and uh, we're having fun with it, bang with the, the little young guns. So they're fast as hell, I'll tell you that. Yeah, they just, uh, I know. this. We talk about this is kind of, to me, one of the first generations of riders that grew up literally living at practice facilities, going to school, you know, doing their online schooling and, and then continually riding. They're exposed to supercross tracks. It's not like they come out here and they're you know, awestruck by this. This is stuff they're practicing on every day. And not only that, they're riding with guys like you and even, you know, you see the Yamaha programs the same way. You've got their amateur guys riding with Eli Tomac and Dylan Frandis. So uh, it's just interesting to see how skillful everybody's become and you're trying to battle these young kids. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, for me, like I, I grew up, came out of high school, went to Loretta, so for nationals and you go to supercross it's just like there's no in between there's no futures there's no nothing so you show up to a legit supercross when you're 17 years old and you're a little bit like what the hell is going on here but these kids have been doing it since now 10 12 years old and they're, you know, they're bred for now so they're uh, up to speed a little quicker than i was when i was a rookie so i'm i'm still playing catch up right now myself like, the, like i said i'm enjoying it it's rare it's sunny daytona better than minneapolis and dallas it's freezing so well good luck out Thank there man we take care yeah. all right so yeah. Phil Nicoletti there on the 715. It's always fun to see a, a veteran rider out there. So let's work our way down the track here. Guys doubling, doubling. Another guy, off, another guy off to our left. We expect to see a good result. The, two, the number two seven Husqvarna, Malcolm Stewart. If we look around here, the uh, the calm before the storm, the crowd. They haven't yet poured in here yet. But this place, they fill up the track, they fill up the grandstands. This is one of those uh, facilities that really has something really unique when the crowd get here. They really have an opportunity to get into the vibe, if you will, of the event. I think it's going to be great tonight. Yep. So, got audio? We're good? Okay. Just want to make sure people can hear. I know it's been a struggle when you're backing off too much. So, the, the point is that you're talking about, I heard that... This, the whole front area is nearly sold out. They have maximum capacity already, and we had a huge crowd last week at Arlington. So this is Supercross is live and well. 
the new official track boots, if you will, are those the official track boots that you'd run on track walk? I'd like to say what I can say, but you have to bleep it out, so. Okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. I just, we don't really pee to pee. Not pee to pee. has to bleep uh, everything out. Beep, 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 beep. So, when we talked about hitting the big jump there, clearing the triple, We've got tabletop here, and then afterwards, as you see the different color of the dirt back there that's where the riders are either launching into two and then doing two out or we'll probably see some guys hit this table and actually get three and single into the 180 there so let's go down and take a look at it rock one of the uh one of the interesting things this race used to have a 40 rider starting gate when you were racing super Cup. Yeah. 40 riders now we're back down to the traditional 22 so the track doesn't quite take the same beating. Another thing we thought about, this might be the shortest lap count of this year. It's 20 minutes, obviously, plus the laps that they add on. This one, well over a minute lap time. We could be in the 18, 19 lap range today. Yeah, yesterday I saw Christian Craig was doing around a 116, 117 lap time yesterday on the full track. He, again, he was the only rider that got was allowed to ride the whole track and he's not entered in the race. So we had to just judge off of that. And again, you said it's a long one. In the old days, the 40 rider gate, the track even went all the way down even further and was a bit longer. So they just wanted to have a lot of bikes on the track because if you only had 20 riders on this gigantic track, it would just look like a practice session. So that was the theory behind stacking. We had some races that literally were two gates, two waves. You had, you had two rows of starts and it was, uh, trust me, you went in the first corner. If you went down, there'd probably be a whole pack of riders right behind you. So you had to be careful. Here's the next color change, if you will, in this track. We go from the red soil into the red clay once again. For the, these riders, this is almost just like a, a natural whoop that's going to develop later on the track. So this is not much. They'll be, again, jumping out here. Some riders will land here and just do a double into the corner. But I do Traditional... Daytona sand on the outside there, so you know that it looks like it's firm now, but it'll be shooting a big roost. Some riders have come down into the bottom here, but it won't take very long for two or three ruts of these developing down here. Past the uh, Dunlop leaderboard here in this section. That's when it's launching off, but we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, it always depends on what kind of drive you can get out. <laughs> Once you're on this table right here with enough momentum, you should be able to clear that. But it's no, there's no knob here, there's no lift here. So as this gets rougher, it will actually help the riders as they get, you know, once, once a little bit of a dip will develop here, they'll be able to pop off and clear that. But 250s might have a bit of a struggle. Got Cooper Webb, the number one plate, walking by, checking it out. I don't think he's too worried about this one. You know, you, have, you were mentioning some of the uh, athletes that are out here walking the track. Every single one of them does it. It's not something that the guys and girls that are watching at home should never not do. It, it really gives you that last bit of information that you can process before you go and race. Here's a gentleman I wouldn't mind having a word with right here. Last week's winner, Cameron McAdoo. And 2021's 250 winner. This was your first Supercross win, right? Yeah, it was. So what is it about Daytona that you just like so much? I don't know. It's awesome. Like it's Daytona. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, well, there's nothing better than racing dirt bikes at the highest level inside Daytona Motor Speedway. Like, it's, this is sweet. You know, yeah. like I was telling some people yesterday, like these are kind of the moments that you know you, you want to really soak in and not take for granted because this stuff's rad. Like, so trust me. It's trust exciting. me. You don't. Yeah. When you, get yeah. when you get older, you look back and you're telling your kids about winning Daytona. That's totally. pretty special. Yeah, it's cool. Really and my. Uh, I think my like my first race that kind of kicked off my career, I guess, when I was an amateur, that kind of put me on the map to get everyone noticed was this uh, race here, Daytona, the RCSX uh, amateur race. I had some good battles with Torkner, and he was the top guy at the time, and, and like that kind of put me on radar to be known um, a little bit. And so like this place has kind of been special for me ever since then. And, and then obviously last year, getting my first Supercross win was massive. It was really cool. So. Um, just looking to 
keep the momentum rolling and well, have a fun night. Well said, Cameron, and, and really you had some great information there. I mean, there is that, you know, for, as a rider, when you have a positive vibe about a track, even as a young amateur, when you step up to the 250, you win last year, and then you, you know, have a come win last week in Arlington. So you, for sure, you know who's got a positive vibe about Daytona tonight right there. He just let you a little inside of the psyche. Yeah. So good job. Hey, Sounds good. Thank you. Good, good luck tonight. Thank All you right. very much. So, so we've got Cameron walking around with his rider coach, Nick Way. I think Nick... Nick number one or number two on the all-time Supercross start list? He's up there. He definitely has a lot of starts. A yeah. lot of uh, lot of gate drops, if you yeah, will. The number 27. The original number 27. Yeah, we got Mookie now, the number 27. I really do expect him to have a good run here. I think I was watching some stuff online a little bit with his brother James Stewart talking about what happened last week in Arlington. And, and James didn't have a whole lot of stuff sympathy for it, but he wasn't saying, oh boy, boy, you really got taken out. It was like, no, if he would have rode a little faster, that opportunity would have not been there for him to take you out or to, to rub or make an aggressive pass. So, point is, I think James is pushing Malcolm to run a little harder, run a little faster, and run a little closer to the limit, because you can't, there's no holding back in the 450 class out here. You have to run at the limit for the whole race. No, absolutely. Now let's keep, keep rolling on here. Yeah. More traditional, old school, this kind of a A tunnel underneath it here, so it's just a long clean launch right out into what is going to be the craziest beach ball whoops. Those things are going to get nasty, nasty. Here you go. Brandon Hartraff cruising around with us now, trying to trying to get up on our track walk. He wants to be up in here. Great to trying see to, you. Trying he, to join. He's, he's up in here with us. What do you think about this section? What would you be doing here? Just grabbing... Taking the long route, the long way around, you better be a lot faster. Plus, you're just bringing more risk into the element. So, you know, insides are usually better, but at Daytona, that history of the track, the inside ruts just get deep, deep very, I guess, more quickly because the first few Mike, laps it takes one, a little while, and then it gets a little one, get deeper and two, deeper. And once it gets that deep, three, you got to get back check. up to the outside to get some flow. Yes. Check, check. Check out. That has some very, very unique caveats that yeah. we saw this morning. I think you folks are going to really enjoy this. Ooh, caveat? Caveat. Hey, caviar. What's up, baby? How you doing? Good How to you see doing? you. I'm doing good. I'm going to turn this into a 30-minute, 40-minute deal. Check. 40-minute <laughs> moto by the time we're done. So this right here, this section right here Rob talked about, this will be a traditional Daytona, all sand. Soft. This is right off the beach. This looks like all sand here. So another color, this adds our third color. We've got the orange clay, we've got the brown, dark, deep black soil of sand, and then we've got this light white beach where the glare, you just need sunglasses or tinted lenses to be riding this, but they won't use those tonight, that's for certain. So inside will be a choice, but I'll tell you right now, it's gonna be hard to get some good drive because this is a double lane double lane beach sand. So just imagine riding at the beach right here or out in the sand dunes somewhere in Glamis or whoever. That's about what this dirt feels like on my feet right now. So here we've got some natural rollers. They've just kind of worked in there and they know that these rollers will get deeper and deeper as the race goes on. So they don't have to build too big of beach balls. Because the bikes that do that, the 450s especially will do that for them back over the starting line here so they'll be the uh, this is a section of the track where it's going to get a lot more unique for what they've just encountered yep right now it's back so we've just pretty much completed the west end of the what is NASCAR turn coming into turn one we've just completed that end of the track and now we're heading back for the opposite rotation on the other end of the track the riders are definitely bunching up here looking Bob mentioned the track down on the other end is pretty traditional. Here, this is a busy, busy section. A lot of obstacles going on. This was added. This knob here was added yesterday after press day. It's going to allow some of these riders to triple in here and then double up on the elevated corner that we're going to see in a minute. Here is going to be a traditional triple where you're going to triple where you see this Twisted T team, the Suzuki team standing got a rut probably two feet deep so that's going to be a tricky corner as the race develops
stock here. This is where the landing point. A lot of riders are going to be tripling this. Some will, if they hit that knob, will be landing here and then launching all right here. You can see on the outside, that's a great big berm. And it dips back down into that section. Outside, no problem. This, if you roll double, you're about the same. Good chance some 450s will be popping all three of these. We'll have to see what happens. And then this is an interesting corner here. It's not really a completely defined corner, They don't, which I like. I mean, they give you an outside berm option, but most riders will be coming on the inside until it gets a big rut here and just popping over the top of it. Get to the old school over under. Hey Robbie, hey buddy, how you doing? Good. Good. This is your one moment today during. Here, let's just stay in here for a moment in the shade. It's, it's it's warm today. It's going to be probably close to 90 degrees today during the daytime. I mean, it's well into the 80s today for the forecast. So the riders are going to be you know they're going to be battling a little bit to make sure the hydrate all that, and then tonight's program obviously to cool back down. But uh, you don't want to burn up too much energy in the first weeks of. During your daytime program. This was one of those inside lines they added just today, this morning. And obviously, you'll be able to hit the inside or work around the outside. But what you don't see on the back side of this is two more obstacles. So, depending on if you hit the inside there, the downside here, and just launch as far as you can into the face of this jump. But if you go from the outside and hit this, you'll triple it and basically be in the same spot. So those two look, I think the lines are gonna be about the same, but we'll just have to see how it develops throughout the race and if you have to change and adapt to the ever-changing conditions. That's the one thing about Daytona, it's ever-changing conditions. You know, the thing about racing indoors in stadiums, the sunlight, the tempest doesn't change, it's a constant, you know, from the roof outside, they're going to be in the heat, the sunlight tonight, it'll be in darkness with artificial light. Yep, you got it. Yeah, so this is your traditional, the one big triple on the track. And it's, uh, you got right here, you got your traditional 64 footer, as we call them. And it's just a stock triple, but boy, it sure looks, every time I'm up at one of these, I always look so much farther than, than I really, the, the riders just make it look so easy. But yeah, it's, it's a big hit. A moment to kind of take a breath, grab a tear off, sort of take a, you know, a little bit of a breather. But if this develops ruts because it looks kind of soft, you got to be a little, you got to be careful here. As the night shadows come on, you could get a little tricky in this section. Traditional dragons back here, pop off into the corner. How are you doing, Mr. Bogle? How's it going, man? Good, man. You got the number 19 Twisted T rider checking out the section. This can't be a challenge for you. This is kind of a basic resting area, isn't it? It's this Daytona, man. It's basic until it's not. It's basic until the main event comes around. And then all those easy sections turn into uh, stuff that will reach up and bite you if you're not careful. So. Exactly. I remember this little mm -hmm. engine right here. Many years Somehow still gets up and it's the fastest guy on the track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> race ended for him, actually, with that night. Nice. Yeah, it's uh... So we're about to ride, watch a few of the riders come through. Um, Christian Craig, one of the best riders in whoops anyhow about here, he was able to get right up on top of these things. And Early, too. Yeah, and unfortunately, somehow, in my awe, make them look easy. But they don't look easy to me. But they do have a nice clay base to them, so they're firm enough, but not too too hard to where they're going to get that what we the real bad cupped out uh you know slippery but these will these will get treacherous as the night goes on just as justin bogle was telling us how the daytona is always that way
just like we talked about. So, I almost want to call these instead of tabletops, taper tops, because they're all tapers in different hey. directions. We're giving you credit. Taper, taper top section. I like it. So, Rob, we're going to hear that tonight. You're here. This is where my area is right here, too. So, live announcing <laughs> Rob Bidos. You're going to, if you listen to tonight, maybe you'll hear some taper tops because I think that's a great, you coined a great phrase. That's what I'm doing out here, coining phrases. So, here's where the interesting part. Check out the berm there. Check out the berm there. Yep, it's an either or lane. You gotta go right or you got inside or you gotta go outside. Outside's a long ways there and you of course, the following corner is the opposite. So quick righty with the next left. So what you have there is you're locked into it. There's no crossing over the berm. There's, you know, once you commit to one lane, you're gonna be there and it's right up as you lead to a jump, another jump, and then the finish. So that's the cool part about it. So on the last lap, we could see a lot of excitement right here. And you're going to see the inside line. You a lot of. We were talking yesterday, and they seem to be almost identical. There yeah. really didn't seem to be a big advantage. I think once the line gets blown out, then they'll have to make a decision. Yeah, but once you get all those riders on the track, then you're going to have it. Both lines are going to get sort of blown out towards the end of that main event. And this is, I think this is going to be an exciting section. I hope it is. Next year, we should do the track walk after practice so we can show them how blown out it gets. <laughs> This is uh, this is kind of amazing. I don't know if we get a camera up here or not. I'll give you a hand up here, but this is you know, on the over under jumps. This is the getting to be more of the tradition. So you're going to get to see and tell us how it all works out all night long down here. It's not so much telling you how it works out for me. It's going to be great for the riders. Man, talk about racecraft as they often mention. What they're going to have to do to incorporate all the insides, outside, which line they select. That's going to be a huge huge playmaker as we work on towards the uh, checkered flag tonight can you imagine leading the race and having someone right on your tail and you got to you got to make that split second decision which lane to go you mentioned james Stort earlier he would have been able to find a way to pop that wall at absolutely. speed absolutely the race that he was so far we were talking about earlier there was a section just in front of the starting line that, that's what he did they he was able to hop over a wall like that. And I mean, honestly, it was two to three seconds a lap faster than the other guys. It was an incredible advantage. Yeah. So right here, leading up to the finish line, you see our team manager, Dan Fahey, up there looking at it, jump right there. And he's hoping that, uh, you know, his rider, Jason Anderson, is able to get up on top of the podium and break that streak from his previous rider. But he's, he's enjoyed a lot of wins here at Daytona with his, you know, Eli Tomac. And then now he's getting a nice run with Jason Anderson this year. Landing there, pretty easy jump here, and then this is where you want to be right there. You want to be Daytona Supercross, crossing the finish line, lighting the candles, and forever in, in infamacy as a Daytona Supercross winner. Rob? I think we did it. I think we gave them the uh, Dunlop Motorsports Dunlop Tire Track Walk. This is, we, we were able to get it done. Thanks, folks, for joining us, Colton. Thanks for having me here. And look at these guys are just looking at the last little because they're going to be on the track in probably about 15 minutes. Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you very much for joining in. I apologize with audio. We're trying to improve it all the time. We're outdoors in the element, the wind, and we'll, we'll get it figured out. But thank you for, again, logging in. We'll see you next week in beautiful, cold Detroit, right? Folks, have a great race week and enjoy bike week. It's going to be a good one. Thank you.